Welcome to Hayes Memorial UMC Online. The purpose of Hayes Memorial UMC is valuing all people, discovering faith, and engaging community. If you would like to know more about our church, please go to www.hayesmemorialumc.org. Is greater far than tongue or pen can never tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bow down with care.
Blessings and Curses, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to to the fruit of their doing. Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when you all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to Hayes Memorial UMC. My name is Joshua. I am the pastor here at Hayes Memorial and we're so glad you're joining us this morning. As I listen to the passages we read this morning, it has been my experience that people are willing to receive gladly what they want to hear, but not so willing to receive what they don't want to hear. In fact, sometimes when we hear something we don't like or something we disagree with, when someone says something to us that we do not want to hear, we can play the victim. We say things like, I can't believe you said that to me. Or, I can't believe that you believe that. You know, you can even develop quite a large following of people by telling them what they want to hear. You can gather huge crowds by telling people what they want to hear. And you can diminish those crowds by telling people what they don't want to hear. In the early 1900s, Chicago humorous Finley Peter Dunn created a fictional character named Mr. Dooley. And this fictional character was an Irish bartender that would humorously give commentary on various topics and issues. The column was published in the local newspaper. One of the topics that Dooley became famous for was about the newspaper itself. Dune or Don, through the mouthpiece of Dooley, wrote these words. The newspaper does everything for us. It runs the police force and the banks, commands the militia, controls the legislature, baptizes the young, marries the foolish, comforts the afflicted, and afflicts the comfortable, buries the dead, and roasts them 
afterward. Now, Dunn wrote this as a criticism of the newspaper, which is somewhat ironic since it was published in the newspaper. He was criticizing how newspapers seem to have biases and they seem to share opinions rather than objective facts at times. In other words, Dunn's concern was that he felt like the newspaper should just bring the news and nothing else and nothing more. What Dunn didn't understand, what he failed to perceive was that he was in fact bringing his own biases and his own opinions into the newspaper. He was doing the exact same thing that he was criticizing the newspaper for. Dunn wasn't interested in the newspaper just reporting the news. Dunn was interested in the newspaper reporting what he wanted to hear, just like us. I dare even say some of our criticism of the news today might have more to do with what we want to hear than it does with the news itself. However, when I read today's passages, I can't help but to think about that one phrase, that little fictional Irish bartender Dooley says. He says, the news comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. And even though Don meant this as a criticism, I believe this is exactly what the good news of Jesus Christ does. It's actually one of the main focuses in the Gospel of Luke. You know, anything that is written down has a purpose. When you read an article in your local newspaper, it has a purpose in mind. And this is true even for the Gospels. For instance, the Gospel of John was written so that you and I might believe in Christ and through our belief in Christ, we might have eternal life. But Luke wrote, Luke wrote to help new believers who have received some instruction about Jesus to gain a more stable and orderly understanding of Jesus' words and actions. Especially how Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. You know the Old Testament. You can find that in Luke 1, verse 1. Luke did not write to evangelize unbelievers like John did. Luke writes to promote stability among the believers. To bridge the gap between Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, insiders and outsiders. But this requires Luke to highlight Divisions between these groups, especially the divisions economically. This is why Luke records Jesus as comforting some and confronting others. Even in our passage today, Jesus blesses the poor, the hungry, the hated but then he warns the rich, the field, and the popular. This is a theme throughout the Gospel of Luke. For instance, it is in Luke that Jesus tells the rich young ruler that if he wants to truly be right with God, if he wants to be blessed, because that's the truest definition of the word blessed, it isn't happy, but it's the idea of having this right relationship with God, to be in favor with God, but if he wants to be blessed, then in order to do so, he must sell all he has and give it to the poor and then come follow me. It seems that that's not exactly what the rich young ruler wants to hear. It's also in Luke that when the lawyer asks, what must I do to to have eternal life, what must I do to be right with God? What must I do to be blessed? And doesn't like the answer that he himself gives to love God and love neighbor? Ask a very justifying question. 
but Jesus, who is my neighbor? In other words, but Jesus, who do I have to love? And Jesus answers the lawyer, even those you hate, by telling the story of the Good Samaritan. And it seems that this isn't what the lawyer wants to hear. Jesus doesn't always tell people what they want to hear. Jesus doesn't always tell us what we want to hear. Partly because if we are honest with ourselves, what we want to hear is usually a way for us to justify our own sin, our own beliefs, our own apathy towards injustice in the world, our own divisiveness. We're in this group, you're in that group. And our own unwillingness to change or to accept change. You see, I'm afraid that when we read passages like the ones we read today, the Jeremiah passage and the Luke passage, the blessings and the curses, the, the blessings and the woes, we, we tend to embrace the blessings of Jesus or we tend to embrace the blessings, but we ignore the warnings. We, we, we tend to see ourselves as those who Jesus is comforting. But rarely do we consider that we could be among those who Jesus is confronting. The United States, where I live, the United States is one of the top wealthiest nations in the world, if not the top. So I would be I would be foolish not to consider that, that perhaps Jesus' warning or woe to the rich doesn't apply to me. But woe to you who are wealthy, who are rich, for you have received your consolation. You know, I have a fridge full of groceries, and believe me, I rarely miss a meal it would be arrogant of me to assume that Jesus' warning to those who are full doesn't apply to me. Woe to you who are full now, for one day you will be hungry. The point is this. You can't cling to the blessings of God without seriously reflecting upon the warnings of God. You can't cling to the words of Jesus that you want to hear without hearing the words of Jesus that you don't want to hear. And that's part of the problem. It seems to me that humanity has a knack for, or a tendency to create God in our image rather than allow God to create us in his. If we are not careful, we will develop an image of Jesus. We will develop an image of God that behaves the way that we do, we will create a Jesus that is as violent as we are, hates people we hate, votes the way we vote, and thinks the way we think, and completely agrees with us on everything. You see, this is the difference. This is the difference between using Jesus to build our own kingdoms and living under Jesus' reign in the kingdom of God. Being a citizen of God's kingdom requires us not just to receive God's blessing, but also to take heart God's warnings. Jesus isn't condemning wealth or having enough food or laughing too much or being well liked. Jesus is warning us about the results of being too comfortable and friends let's be honest don't we live in a culture that tells it's tells us it's all about our comfort and yet jesus is constantly challenging that in luke's gospel You see, here's what I recognize about my own life. It's when I am comfortable that I rarely see my need for God. 
Jeremiah highlights this in chapter 17, verse 5. He says, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and those who make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. Or, or, or Proverbs 14, 12 highlights this as well. Uh, there is a way that seems right to a man. There's a way that seems right to Joshua. But in the end, it leads to Joshua's death. I have a tendency to trust in my own wealth. I have a tendency to trust in my own ability to provide. I have a tendency to trust in myself. And the reality is, is when I have enough, when I have enough money, when I have enough food, when I have enough laughter, when I have enough people that are like me and people that agree with me, when I am comfortable, when I am void of any kind of confrontation in my life, I struggle to trust God because I am too busy trusting in myself. And I struggle to see the needs of others because I am detached from their suffering. This is the warning. Jesus and Jeremiah are saying that when we are so focused on satisfying our own appetites, we turn our attention away from God at the detriment of our own spiritual health. The opposite can be true too. When I'm struggling, when I don't have enough, when I recognize I'm in need, when I'm uncomfortable, then I tend to trust God and his provision for my life. I even tend to be more sympathetic, even empathetic to the needs of others because I know what it's like to want. Please hear me. The call isn't to become poor to be blessed. The call is to trust God even in the blessing. That's why Jeremiah says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Blessed are those whose trust is the Lord. You know, that's exactly why Jesus doesn't always tell us what we want to hear. That's why the good news comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. Because learning to trust God means that we not only need to be comforted by Jesus, but we must be willing to open up our hearts and our minds to be confronted by him too. I love the way that Luke's, Luke describes Jesus' teaching in this passage. It says that Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place. The picture that Luke paints of Jesus isn't a Jesus or a God that teaches some, from some high, lofty mountaintop. But rather, it's a Jesus that gets face to face. A God that gets in our face. A Jesus that invades our personal space. Gets eye to eye on our level. Even looks us in the eye. In other words, Luke is saying that Jesus sees us, that Jesus sees you. Jesus sees our need to be comforted when life is chaotic, when we experience injustice, when we are in pain, when we suffer, and when we know loss. Jesus sees us. But also, <laughs> Jesus sees through us. He sees the parts that we like to hide, and he confronts us about them. God sees us whether we are rich or poor, and Christ names our poverty and our wealth. Jesus invites us to put everything at his disposal, and to come follow him. 
receiving his instruction, receiving his teaching. The things we like to hear and also the things we don't. God knows us, the real us, not the good face we put on so others will think well of us, but the us that struggles to trust, the us that trusts in ourselves, the us that looks for our own justification, and the us that seeks out only what we want. But praise God, Jesus loves us enough to still confront us. <laughs> so let me ask you, where do you need to experience God's comforting, comforting grace today? Are you poor? Are you hungry? Are you hated? Receive Christ's blessing in your life in the impoverished areas of your soul. But don't just stay there. Where do you need to hear God's confronting grace? Are you rich? Are you full? Are you well liked? Are you comfortable? Receive Christ's warnings. And may both the blessings and the woes lead you to a deeper faith in Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you once again for joining us online. We hope that you found this service encouraging and nourishing to your faith as you seek to grow closer to God. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so in three ways. You can give in person, by mail, or online. Go to www.hayesmemorialumc.org, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and click the donate button. Now please prepare your heart for a blessing. Go in the love of God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, his Son, in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Go knowing how much you are loved. Amen.